our public hearing to order. If everybody would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for um, coming tonight. We have a, a pretty busy agenda, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to conduct a double barrel public hearing. Tonight, we will talk about our um, 2021 to 2041 update of our comprehensive plan. We will then discuss our 2021 um, budget, and then we will open up the floor for public comments. <clears throat> and then following those, we will close our public hearing. Um, because we have several guests um, here tonight, we're going to go ahead and go to the comprehensive plan update. Uh, the comprehensive plan process is facilitated by the Department of, of Community Affairs and the Three Rivers Regional Commission. Uh, scheduling conflicts have prevented Kim Dutton, who is the planner for Three Rivers, from coming tonight. So I will be driving the presentation. Um, so if you guys will just pay attention over here to the TV. And Council, can y'all see? Can y'all see good enough on the um, see good enough on the TV? Okay. So this meeting is the kickoff uh, public hearing to talk about the comp plan process. And, and how to do it, and why do we need a comprehensive plan? Well, first off, because it's a state law. Um, the other reason that we want to do it is because it allows us to assess the assist, uh, existing conditions of the town and then our future needs. And because this is a public process and we're going to look for input from so many different um, stakeholders and other, other uh, groups and citizens inside the community, we want to establish a community-based long-term vision for the community's future. And this makes sure that as we're building our budget, we know what some of our overarching priorities are. It also gives council some policy guidance for future actions that are based on a shared vision. Because we've got the community involved, and because the, the community is giving a direction and, and vision and goals for the council and it's implemented into a planning document, council can use that policy to justify future expenditures. For example, for infrastructure, for park space, for other needs within the town. Um, it also allows us to formalize a plan and um, leverage that any public and private investments. For example, if we want to go after any grants, it benefits us to say in the community-based community-driven vision in the comprehensive plan to justify any costs or expenses that are expenditures that we want to make. It also gives us our qualified local government status. This is one of the things that the town has to do to remain qualified, to be a qualified government. And then of course it also allows us to remain eligible for, for grants and other funding programs. A number of grant programs federally and at the state level are tied to your local qualified government status. So the plan framework, if you um, look at the uh, sample comp plan that you have at your uh, table, you will see that the comp plan is broken into several uh, sections. We've got the, the vision statement of the town, our goals and policies, our community priorities, one thing that is new this year or in this uh, version of the plan is the broadband capabilities or the broadband work that um, uh, to provide uh, up-to-date technology and needs for the uh, for, for broadband uh, basically. Um, it also includes our character areas and land use. So we take a look at our reg residential properties any multifamily that we've got, uh, commercial areas, uh, any recreational areas, and how do we plan to use the land or the different areas, and what steps do we need to take to improve it? That's one of the things that I, I would like to see a big difference in um, with the uh, comprehensive plan is not just what do we want 
a certain character area to look like? What do we want downtown to look like? What do we want our commercial district to look like? We want to have steps in those to get it to that, to that point because a plan that's just a wish list or a checklist doesn't really make it much of a plan. It's just something that you wish that you had. But if we have actual planning <laughs> steps for each of those character areas, that will help us reach that goal. So the planning horizon for the comprehensive plan is the uh, is a 20-year time frame. We're going from 2021 to 2041, and we do it in five-year increments. So we call those the work program, the community work program. Um, in the back of the comprehensive plan, you'll see a list of tasks. And a good example of it, we have a, a, a sample of it up there on the on the table or for council. One of the things in the last, uh, the last time we had a comprehensive plan it was expand the library holdings to maintain the adopted level of service. And as everybody's aware, in October of 2019, we reopened the library. So we put the, the, the newspaper article from the Times Herald that showed when we reopened the library, it shows pictures of the services that the library offers, and this is a good way for the town to point and say, hey, we had this goal to expand our library holdings. Well, guess what? We accomplished it through the community work program, and this allows the town to celebrate the success, the successes that we have had, and there are, and, and I'm proud to say there's a number of items on the community work program that we have either started, completed, or are in progress on. So, it, and the reason that we do this is so that the a uh, comp plan is not a static document. It's something that's always living and growing and we're always trying to get things accomplished within it. And part of the reason that we have the five-year cycle is because think of how much things have changed in the last five years. We didn't want 10 or 15 years of the 20-year planning horizon to get past us, but we have regular five-year updates. So, the comprehensive plan team, there are quite a few of us that are going to be working on it. We're going to have town staff, uh, we've got our consultant team from Three Rivers, we have the steering committee, which tonight I have two-thirds of it, at, well actually more than that, we have uh, two-thirds of our, our citizens um, on, the comp on the steering committee here as well as mayor and the town staff that will be involved. Um, we have the public that is going to be invited to participate and provide feedback. Uh, our elected officials will report city staff. So we're basically just going to be rotating um, information and, 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 and things back and forth and around and really getting a good um, broad base for the plan. Um, we are going to ask and encourage the public to participate, and, and they can do that in several ways. They can be start, start of the um, part of the steering committee. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Edge, who I'll introduce here in a little bit, answered the call that we put out for citizen participation. Um, of course, we want to have elected officials. Uh, we want to try to identify economic development representatives and then other community appointees. So as we're having our steering committee meetings, we will have representatives probably from public safety, uh, from the county, uh, from Public Works to come in and say, hey, this is how we can be a part of or how we can assist in your planning and in your programming. Um, we will offer open house and community visioning events, which is where people can, can show up. And it's either going to be a combination of in-person and virtual or a survey or something, but we will put out and say, hey, give us some of the vision that you see for the community. How do we get there? What, what do we need to add? What do we need to incorporate? Um, and then that also helps make sure that we have the, the community's vision for the future because, you know, we're doing this in five-year increments, and so we have to ask, where are we five, 10, 15 years from now? And then as a steering committee, we will draft a plan for review that will be open for public um, uh, comment and then also comment by town staff. Our schedule is going to be um, our schedule. I think is going to be is going to be fairly reasonable. Uh, you can see that we have um, steering committee meetings. We have five of those, and then we have um, public hearings, and then reviews of the plan. 
And so we're, we will probably meet once a month for probably the next five or six months, maybe two hours in a session, just to identify the things that we want to change or improve on within the comprehensive plan. Um, and then, of course, with the goal being that the town adopt the comprehensive plan by October 2021. And then here is the contact information for our um, planner with three years, Kim Dutton. She has been to a couple of our events over the year, the last couple of years with the town, so she will be a familiar face. But the way that the steering committee is going to be set up is we will have, we're going to go ahead and hopefully identify meeting dates and times and then call those work sessions so that we can have a more than one council member at the sessions, at the, uh, at the steering committee sessions if they are able to come. Open record laws prevent us from congr congregating in, in more than a quorum, which is three of us. But if we call it a work session and advertise it, which you know is, is what we're going to do because it's something we want to invite the public to, we can have a mayor and two or three council members. As it is, it can just be a mayor and, and no more than the mayor and two council members in attendance anywhere because of the sunshine laws. Um, <clears throat> so we will have all those as, as work sessions so that myself and then however many council members attend can and want to. But then we have the public members of the steering committee. Um, Joe Bridges, who is the point of contact for the Bridges family, will represent them on the steering committee. Um, he wasn't able to be here at, uh, for scheduling conflict, but he is on the committee. Uh, Tony Brown, who is a local business owner, is also going to be on the committee. He has the refinishing business that is up by William Circle in 54. And then we have Beverly Thomas, who is the branch manager at uh, Bank OZK right here in Sharpsburg. And then we have Alessandra and Alex Edge from Wellsburg Station. And we would like to thank you guys for coming as well and, and being a part of it. So, after the all that great information, does anybody have any questions about the comp plan? Okay, Brad, is there anything else that we need to um, talk about or cover with the comprehensive plan? I, other than if there's any comments from the, since it is a public hearing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments from okay. any of the people here? Public, do I have any comments or questions about the um, comp plan or anything that you hope to accomplish with it? got to say something. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just moved here in uh, 2019, February. Mm -hmm. We've been here about two years almost. And we're just, uh, you know, you see all the growth in Future City. Uh, I own a business in Brooks. And my family just moved to Brooks within like the last five years, mm -hmm. Illinois. And uh, so we just wanted to get involved uh, since we live right through the woods there. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to get involved with sort of the direction of where things are going and be. Yeah, uh, thank you. What, what, what's so, your business? What do you do? Uh, it's a, it was a, the car wash next to Huckabee's, which mm -hmm. turned it into like a car sales lot. And, oh, uh, okay. Didn't you have a car dent place or something? Yeah, it would dent. be double as that yeah. as well. But, so I do dent repair Okay. for a living. I actually travel the country and do hail damage repair. Huh. Uh, right now, but uh, trying to get more invested locally so yeah. that I'm not traveling uh, all year, all the time. Um, so yes, it doubles as that, and then we also uh, sell used cars, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, just something we've done, and we've got that going about the last year since we bought that property. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're just kind of along for the ride. We just want to be involved, you know, and be a part of the growth, really. Just to prove that it's a small world, no matter where you go, Rick. Uh, Rick Corbin, his dad Chick, owned the BP up here uh, at the corner of William Circle and 54. And anytime I would go through Huckabee's or, or Brooks, I'd swing in there when I was traveling and I'd speak and talk to Rick. And yeah. I checked on his dad for, I don't know, five or six years until he, until he passed, you know? Yeah. So, but he, uh, 
He, 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 Chick gave me one of my first jobs cooking biscuits in the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I kept the job until I overslept one morning and called him. <laughs> he said, I did the best I could, but we'll have to talk about this. Well, Rick will probably hire you back. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's certainly a small world. Yeah, so. he's been really easy to work with. Right? Yeah, I think he appreciates guy. that somebody is doing something with the property next mm -hmm. door. So. Yep. But. Good. Good for you. Yeah. Ms. Edge, what about you? Um, I'm definitely interested in uh, community outreach, I would mm -hmm. say, um, and especially in regards to the comprehensive plan. Is there a section within it that, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to review it no, recently, fine. but like, is there a section within it that talks about community outreach? And, There's um, not a dedicated section in there, but each of our activities is going to be probably centered around it. If not, for the actual activity, just to get input and, and ideas and thoughts and engagement. So okay. a lot of what we do here in the town is about promotion and outreach, and that's the background that I come from, too. Mr. Flavin over there could probably um, do, give us some lessons on outreach. I was about to say, I, I get her name. And <laughs> 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 now hang on, though, wait a minute. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, yes, and, and that I think is going to be part of our co coordinated effort is to identify groups, the high school, Team Hungry, uh, Sarsburg Baptist, and invite them to come and engage as well. Beverly, do you have any Just thoughts? Just business development really is, mm -hmm. you know, being the only small community bank in the area. And, and this is not just for, for, for the bones of the town. This is how do we attract more businesses? What product do we have to present? What do we have services do we have to provide to get those, to get additional businesses? You know, if we're gonna develop that section of 54 north of McIntosh, we're gonna have to have gas. We're gonna have to have utilities. We're gonna have to improve the water delivery in addition to the sewer infrastructure. So. There's lots of planning pieces that go into uh, economic development, comprehensive planning, stuff like that. So thank you all very much for, for, for your participation. What, while I've got you all here, what day of the week works best for you? Because what I'd like to do is go ahead and set, well, maybe not tonight, but within the next couple of days, find out what days work best for you guys, and then set one day each month within the community center or to to, to, to hold the meeting. So what days of the week in the evenings work best for y'all? I like Mondays, personally. Yeah. Monday. You know, Monday. beginning Monday. of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 We'll um, check our schedule here and then just pick some dates. I will, I will get feedback from a couple of the others and just see where we stand. But, you know, other, other than council meetings, we don't have a whole, whole lot going on Mondays. Um, Tuesday, depending on our, our um, instructor schedule, may work a little bit better, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I just wanted to get, get a, a couple of <coughs> days from it. All right. And the only other thing I would suggest to the new people in doing this is that this became a requirement uh, for comprehensive planning back in the early 90s. And so, uh, under what was called at the time House Bill 489, so this is a, a, a little bit unusual 20-year cycle since that particular time. Uh, but because of all the growth that's taken place in the state of Georgia, DCA has come back. And so most of us did this, kind of did an update to it back, I don't know, 10 years ago, I guess, so it became a moving 20 years. Uh, and so now DCA has come back, and I guess it was what, 2018 mm -hmm. when they said, okay, we want everybody to redo their comprehensive plan through the year, you know, by the end of 2021 for 2041. And that's just DCA's way of trying to figure out what's going on because they review all the plans. Uh, to figure out what's going on from a development standpoint.
standpoint so that DCA can provide a service in the areas it can help in toward the city. So we're doing this a little sooner than before because I think our current comprehensive plan really didn't run out until 2026, 2027. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're doing the cycle a little sooner than before. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I didn't think to do is just, I introduced you guys to them, but we haven't introduced ourselves to you. So I'll go ahead and start here, and then we'll go to that end of the table and then come over here. Obviously, I'm Blue. I'm the mayor here in town, elected in, um, what was it, 2019? And they got me for four years. So, <laughs> so, so far, so good. Julie? I'm Julie Stroud. I live in Sonoy. I've been employed by the town since last November. And I'm Dina Ray. Um, I'm the town clerk, and I've met Mr. Edge before, and I know um, Ms. Thomas and Mr. Flavin. Um, but I'm here to make a And she is our town clerk. Yes. And I'm Brad Sears. I'm the town attorney. I'm Tom Teagle. I'm the councilman. I'm Elizabeth Judd, I'm council member, mayor pro tem. Sam Martin, council member, in Sharpsburg for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia Puckett Pike, council member. And, and um, while we aren't required to have a certain number um, on uh, uh, elected officials on the committee, it's an open invitation. You know, they're going to have all the dates and, and I hope that all of them can attend every meeting, but we'll probably have a rotating um, seat on the on the steering committee for a council member, uh, and then of course I'll be at I'll be at all of them. All right. So if in, if there are no other questions about the comprehensive plan, we'll go ahead and slide into the 2021 2021 budget. Um, do we have any other questions before I move into the uh, budget public hearing? All right, wonderful. Um, Dina, do you want to go ahead and take just a second? This is our second reading of the budget and the public hearing um, to present it to the public uh, in uh, accord with the state law. So, Dina, I'll let you take over. Well, tonight we're just going to review the proposed budget um, for the public hearing so we can vote on our first review um, after the public hearing. So, um, did you guys get a copy of it? We have increased our total revenues and expenditures by 4.5%. Um, we've moved some money around just due to 5% increase on a lot of different stuff as far as bills and things like that. So do y'all have any questions? And I think our priority, typically each year we go into the budget saying this is a priority. Uh, year one and year two, it was it was modernizing and, and updating a, a good number of things. Uh, we're very happy to report that personnel, uh, technology, uh, even things as, as routine as, as furnishings have, have been brought up to, you know, newer, more, more modern standards and, and levels so so that part is is almost caught up um, and for this year this budget is almost it's not quite a holding pattern we definitely want to hold steady uh, through the the upcoming year and with 2020 that we just had but what I would like to do is to start positioning budgets based off of the comp plan that we're going to do to start funding some of the things that we know are going to come out of this comprehensive plan one of the things that you're going to see down at the very bottom is a new um, account code that we've added, and it's an infrastructure slash utility fund. Um, the town, with all the growth around us, we may be positioned to, we, to, to improve our infrastructure and or improve or expand our utilities. Um, and that is something that I want to go ahead and, and start planning for and start thinking of, and then just getting everything set up for revenue growth and just growth in general. Um, <clears throat> we have kept our millage rate steady for the last 
six or seven years. Uh, we haven't had any movement on it. The natural growth in the tax digest has, has given us the growth that we need. Um, we have been very frugal with our money. Dina, where are we on our um, operating budget and our general uh, um, accounts receivable and all that? Um, as of November the 30th, and I've put a copy by your packages, um, we have received 120% of our um, 2020 budget, as well as spent out only 79% of our budget, so that's very good. So that, those numbers tell us a couple of things. Number one is, is we are very conservative in our revenue projections, which leads to uh, you know, the 20% overage. Um, with 25 to 30 days left in the year. Um, our expenses were very frugal because our expenses don't keep growing. You know, we, we are able to keep those up underneath and that allows us to put money back into our, our um, general fund and basically just saving the cash for things that we know are gonna come up. Uh, but in, in most cities, as you are, are, are growing, you are Money's coming in and money's coming out. So, so even though we have been doing good to save money, in order to continue to improve and provide services or expand services, now is time to start taking some of that saved money and putting it to work. Because money that's not working for you is money that's just sitting. So we want to kind of take <clears throat> this budget year, keep the foundation in place, but get ready to add the new things that we know that are going to be coming. Do we have any questions on the proposed budget? From public or from council? How do we get motor vehicle tax? Um, I'm going to defer that one to Brad because that law has been changed up a couple of different ways. Well, we have an Avalon tax and a TAVT tax. So when you buy a vehicle, the Avalon tax comes from that. And Brad? Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> As you all know, what they used to call the birthday tax, when you got your, your uh, tag, you paid your Avalon tax. Mm -hmm. Alright, any car on which the TBAT tax was not paid uh, still collects the ad valorem tax. So those are all older vehicles. Alright, so they went in and created the TBAT where they collect, if you bought a new vehicle, you pay the tax up front. So when you get your tag bill the next year, it's only got the $20 fee doesn't have ad valorem because they're collecting it up front. The, the way the distribution formula was set up was just nightmare for everybody. Uh, but essentially, yeah. if you go buy a new car and you say your address is Main Street, Sharpsburg, then Sharpsburg is supposed to get its portion of the TBAT tax. That was not necessarily working because what was going on at the Revenue Department, as you all know, Sharpsburg is probably the biggest city in the state of Georgia because everybody from way down there all the way to the Fulton County line may have a Sharpsburg address. All right, so they went back in to change the law. Initially, everybody was getting a few tips and then everybody was is it went down uh, and you had counties and school systems getting a larger share of what the municipalities were getting on the, on the new car sales. So they went back in and did some changes to the law, but of course it wasn't finished until June because of the delay in the legislative session. And so as the quarterly starts rolling around, I have not heard that you got something. Did you get more money? No, we're, we, we had to do a, um, we had to do some research and, and show how much we've received for the last several years mm -hmm. and we definitely took a big hit this year. Yeah. So, in other words, it, it apparently was not working the way they thought it was going to work and municipalities were kind of getting shorted on some of the money. So, 
Anyway, but that, that, so eventually the ad valorem tax would go away. As all of the older vehicles, now that may be 30, 40 years from now, but at some point mm -hmm. all of that will go away and they'll, they'll collect that tax when you buy the vehicle. So Brand, if somebody in the town of Sharpsburg buys a new car, we get a portion of that sales tax. Uh, All right, what about the renewal fee every year, like twenty dollars? We get a portion of that too. No, no, it's That's just one and done. You're done. You're done. Okay. You're done on that particular vehicle. <laughs> now they they did go back and they they were trying to recollect on used car sales mm. on the on the and so I'm not sure how that worked out on the used car sale. Um, and, and of course, if, as you may recall back. I don't know, what was it, 20 years ago? They tried to collect the tax, sales tax on a person-to-person -person sale, mm -hmm. and as the tags would get changed over, they would start billing the prior owner for value. So I'm not 100% sure we what it's going to look like, yeah. but mm -hmm. it, it... I just thought it all went to the county. I didn't know we got a portion of it. No, we, no actually, we, we, we get a little bit. It, ha it, it has gone down, which is why they've gone back and fixed it, but hopefully it'll come back up. I just curious, I didn't know about that. <coughs> mm -hmm. it, it's you been know, a we, we got a big um, lost, or was it lost money, a couple of thousand dollars where they found an error last month. So maybe in a couple of years they'll go back in the Department yeah. of Revenue and find another error. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll <laughs> yep. get reimbursed. It may take that long. Well. <laughs> it will. <laughs> yeah, we will take it. All right, any other questions or comments on the budget? Yeah, I just want to point out that on that 120 percent of the budget received, that 40,000 of that 42 is for two line items. So it's it looks pretty, but it ain't mm -hmm. as pretty as it looks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got your about 17,000 in the local option sales tax excess, mm -hmm. and you've got 23,000 dollars from the grant, which I think is with the federal bailout money. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's 40,000 of the 42. Mm -hmm. Just a comment. Yep. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I, I, I the lost. The local option sales tax, we got 16000 more than we had budgeted. And the grant money, which is the bailout money, is 23000 Those two together are $40,000 of the 42 that we're showing as a balance to receive, which is basically the excess we've collected over the budget. Well, everything in the negatives are added up to the 42, not just two, those two items. I know, but those two items make up 40 of the 42. Right, right, right. That's, all, that's my only point. That we received, um, we received a scholarship reimbursement for me for going to school or a class, a couple of classes. We received our safety liability grant money in there, <laughs> and then we had the CARES Act is also in there. and the LMIG grant. Okay. <clears throat> um, in addition to our um, operating budget, we also have our SPLOST fund program budget uh, for the upcoming year. Basically, uh, Dean, I'll let, you, well, Dean, I'll let you talk about the SPLOST. Um, right now we have a balance of 5557 I mean, uh, $5,567 in our SPLOS 2013 account. In our 2019 SPLOS, we had a balance of $82,191, and we have earned about $30 of interest. So that $82,000 is our balance. The $57,000 is our projected um, receivables from Calhoun County um, for the planned projects for 2021. So the total that we'll have um, will be $144,770. And so this is another funding mechanism. Oh, I'm sorry. Where, where can we, where can I see these uh, SPLOS plan projects? We, uh, it's going to be the comprehensive plan. Okay. And why, and, and these are what we will, because these are the, 
areas that we can spend money on, we can spend SPLOS projects on. We need to make sure whatever projects we have in the comp plan or we bring before council fits into one of these categories. broad categories. Yeah. Of course, they're broad. And if we overspend in one category, we have to, Brad, help me here, we have to have um, uh, allocations before council, before we move the money around. So if we wanted to do a $26,000 utility project, we would have to approve the transfer from roads and streets to utility. Correct, Brad? Mm -hmm. Okay. And these are the, the three areas that were put to voters when it went to referendum back in 17 or 18? 16, 17? Or whenever it went to vote. It was just whenever. <laughs> 1919, 2002, 2007, 2007, 2017. 2017, okay. So, all right. Well, if there are no other questions on the proposed budget for 2021, I will go ahead and call for a close to the public hearing. Okay. All right. Stan has, do we motion to exit the yeah. public hearing? Okay. All right. Well, then we will just close the public hearing and then go ahead and call our council meeting to order. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have a quorum available? Yes, we do. All right. Thank you very much. And if the first item that we have is to review and approve our meeting minutes of November 9th, if I can have everybody take a look. Thanks, Ms. Beverly. Um, and let me know what you think. Second. <laughs> Has everybody had a chance to read over the minutes? All in favor? I wasn't present. Was it present? All right. uh, nearly unanimous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next bit of new business is Mr. Jeffrey Flavin with the Sharpsburg Market. Come on down. Mine's short and sweet, and I got a I got 35 kids in my house. <laughs> well, are you sure you don't want to stay for a little while? <laughs> And hang out. It's a lot quieter over here than it is over there. I have two kids running around. Have you seen that? Get <laughs> closer. All right. Um, we have had two Sharpsburg markets thus far, and it's been very going very well. From logistic point of view, every vendor that we've gone around has loved it. They love the atmosphere. Uh, they're excited about coming back. Uh, we had 26, we had 33 last time. We have 25 coming in this Friday. We're trying something brand new. We're doing a market at night from five to nine. And we got Santa Claus coming, a real Santa Claus, a real person. Mm -hmm. He actually has no problem having people sit there, but we will have parents. They're gonna take their own pictures. And we'll have a food truck here. It's a brand new one. It's <laughs> they found them at a church and their name is Mother Cluckers. <laughs> so I'm just so I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> They're going to crossroads. <laughs> but I'm really here to uh, look ahead next year because I like to plan ahead. And we will not be meeting in January or February, but we want to start back up in March. So I'm coming for 
2021 to ask you to consider again waiving the fee for a nonprofit organization to uh, rent out the facility uh, for for next year. And we have already given the dates to Dina uh, from March already to December. And they've already been given. And then I also like to put on the table that uh, to process to begin to think about putting uh, our vendors on the street. Uh, if you look in your ordinances, it's uh, ordinance section 44-115, and all the things that it states we will do. Um, from barricades to the right people, but uh, again, it's uh, section 44-115, uh, look at that. Um, and we're basically doing 90% of everything else already. Is it the special event ordinance that you're it talking about? Special, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and so we're we're meeting everything. Uh, we meet it after just about everyone, mm -hmm. and then we go how to go, how to not go, and uh, we 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 have immediate feedback uh, from everybody. And so that's really just what I wanted to present to you. Just to say the vendors are really really excited about coming back, and we have more vendors next year. We're talking in the 40s, possibly 50s that want to come back. Some of them remember doing it 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And cool. they're going, we want to be a part of that again. Yeah. And they want to be a part of the beginning. And they're excited. Okay. And some of the uh, town people have been coming in there going, they're excited too. So, mm -hmm. now first of all, I say thank you for letting us do it. And uh, I just say thank you for letting us do it again mm -hmm. uh, because we, as we move forward. Um, I would also like to present the idea of let's piggyback like we did the book club mm -hmm. of sales. I thought that went well for y'all. Mm -hmm. We made more money, mm -hmm. we had more foot traffic, and I had more of a camaraderie between the, the town and this people coming in. So start strategically thinking about what we can all do together. Mm -hmm. So is this something to think about? So I don't know what else to say. So when you're looking towards 2021, you're wanting to hold monthly Sharpsburg Market. Are you going to and continue using the park and pavilion? Would you also need an inside space for the community center as well? As of right now, we don't project to use inside. Uh, even though it's a rain or shine, mm -hmm. which is what it is, uh, we're just going to take, if it rains, we're going to give the money back. Most places don't. We're just not about that. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm not going to say no, right? Uh, but we don't project that yet. The okay. only, only thing to possibly use is for some of the vendors or food truck people might need to form something up, mm -hmm. which that was offered, but it wasn't used that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. so. okay. um, <clears throat> have you already identified the dates for 21? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are they, have you had a chance to see if we have anything scheduled on those dates? Not yet. So all of them are clear for now? Are they all on Saturdays? Those are all on Saturdays this time. Okay. I haven't double checked it. Okay. Yet. Okay. Um, so, Council, one thing for we can go ahead and do this a couple of different ways. We can go ahead and, as a group, just go ahead and approve those. How many months out of 12? Nine months? Ten months, 10 months out of 12? Just skip in January. March February. December. Okay. Um, so, basically, one Saturday a month, you know, we're donating to Team Hungry for them to raise money for their nonprofit mission and also to hopefully continue to do movies up there. Um, we did some research last year and we collected about $3,200 over those <coughs> target dates from, was it 19 or was it, it wasn't 20, was it? It was 19? 19. 19, okay. So we actually have real pre-COVID numbers. So we will lose a little bit of, of hard currency if we donate these dates to them. However, I think the goodwill and, and civic engagement and foot traffic that we get through here makes up for it. Um, the, the last two markets have gone extremely well. I've heard nothing but positive feedback. And any criticism that there was out there was constructive. Um, it's just something to build on. Now, a, as long as you guys understand that we've got the parking lot coming up that may or may not happen in right. early that was one of the things we kind of talked about. Do you have a projected time so we can um, not yet, but uh, not as of, 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 of today, but um, the engineers will come back in January with a 90% design document, uh, 
cost estimate, and by then we should have the amount of time it's going to take. I don't know that we will have it exactly scheduled with the county, but by the time I come back to you guys in January, I anticipate having a conversation with the county to help us with that, which will also help us with a cost estimate. So long story short, I hope to by next time we, we meet to have those dates. And I will try to get them in January and February, but and there's four Saturdays in a month, so I may miss your Saturday, but just long we go ahead of time. Yeah, we yeah. we'll give you. We'll, we, you'll know well before March when it's going to be. And then you know where you'll be. Easy to work with. Um, Dean, is there anything else that um, well, information-wise we we should or need to provide? Uh, Jeff, any other final thoughts or outlets? Outlets, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go and buy just a sleeve of GFCIs and just start walking around, like, like I told you the other day. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm going to try to do that Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. I hope I don't kick the can down the road till Friday. But What's that? GFCIs, we've got a couple of GFCI outlets out there that need to be swapped out. And it's a 10 minute process, it's just a matter of. In the gazebo, you mean? Gazebo and. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by uh, vendors on the street? Walking off the street. Uh, basically, a street festival. Like they used to do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like we like we do the fall used festival. Used to the old days, they'd block it off at the beginning of tearing yeah. down the whole town. Mm -hmm. in my yeah. Bed. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, we would have we would have vendors in each of the two big lots up here, the lot just to the west of the fertilizer warehouse, and then they would park um, where the townhouses are and the, behind the duplexes on Stovall. That's really the biggest thing is is we'd have to work out parking. If we can do the, if we can figure out parking, we can we can easily do a, a street festival. Right. It probably won't be as big as the old fall festivals, but it's a start. You know, we could just block off Main. We could block off the whole thing and people would park on the streets, you know, as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes they would. So, but that will, that will take planning and will probably be more suited for springtime, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try to look at your March date as a street festival? I will go more probably first of February. Okay. Because vendors are saying they're, you know how they, they lock in for a full year at certain mm -hmm. places? Yep. And so they're making that decision now. Like some people, we had four people back out because they got to be a part of the Ashley Park four day festival. Right. Yep. And so, I mean, we understand that. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. We're, we're making a living. Plus, it's inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be cold. Yeah. Right. So, come on out. <laughs> Is there any more room? Friday? Friday evening? Get the possibility. Yep. The Sharpsburg Baptist lady? Yeah, Sharpsburg Baptist uh, ladies, they do a lot of, they make a lot of crafts and quilts and things like that. And I had actually submitted to Laura Burnett well, an email email about it. And that was two and a half weeks ago. I haven't had anything back. So maybe we could get her to, to look into that. But I was basically inquiring as to the cost, which I see the cost is on here. Yeah. And, you know, if what they make and sell I think one of the things that we have tried to do is, and I'm not saying this is true, we try to limit, we've got two or three already nonprofits there that we put there, we try not to have that many, but I don't see why not. But I was definitely, I'm going to be calling Lori after this, right? Took a picture of what it like, looked like at night. Mm -hmm. um, and did we have to find out if those outlets were? I think it is the uh, sale, whatever lights come on, they're supposed to come on. So we're not definitely, I mean, I think Lou's going to work on this and look at the deal. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I'm going to invite Tina's out. Okay. All right, so at this point, um, we've got a good bit of uh, information from Jeff. Uh, of course, he's always available if we have any other questions. Um, if a member of council would like to, you can make a motion to um, donate those listed dates to him. I motion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I motion to right. donate the date and waive the fee. Yes. All right. So, so Cynthia has the um, motion to donate the dates that he's already submitted to, D to Dina and to waive the fees. 
Second. All right, Elizabeth has the second. Uh, all in favor? Well, I got one oh, comment. Oh, oh um, I'm sorry. Yes. As long as there's no conflict with those dates, I'm good yes. with that. Okay. All right. All right. All in favor? Right. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. We had a sharp score market for 2021. Yeah. We tried to do it the third week, third Saturday is what we were trying to do. Third Saturday. There's a conflict with that day. I guess you just switch it to another date in that month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got 30 kids. <laughs> hey, all right. Thank you. Um, we'll, hey, let's, we'll touch base tomorrow or Wednesday. I'll be around. I, I teach a lot of kids. Uh, this is Okay, I'll do that. Hey, do you, hey, you may want to check with Dina first. I think she's going to double check those dates. And while she's doing that, I'll go ahead and move to the next item on our agenda. Uh, we need to do the first reading for our 2021 budget, which is the one that we discussed in our public hearing earlier. Thanks, y'all. I'll be in touch. Thank you. you um, this is the first reading. The second reading will occur um, at the January council meeting. It will, it will adopt the, uh, the budget to go into effect uh, for 2021. Uh, town charter says we have to do it within 30 days at the end of our fiscal year. Fiscal year ends December 31st, so as long as we do it within the month of January, we will be uh, on track. So, do we have any other questions about the budget? That was not good. That we have presented. Thank you. Yeah, staff does a, a great job minding, minding the register uh, for us and, and really helping us spend our money well. Do we need to vote on this? Yes, we will. I'd like a motion to accept it as written. All right, so Stan has a motion to accept the first reading of the budget. I'm sorry, Dina? All the dates um, that he has given me are open. Okay, okay. Good. excellent. Good. Okay. I have a question before we vote. Sure. Are we, as, and it, 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 this, this doesn't queer whether or not you vote for it, but are we assuming that there will not be another shutdown, and are and if so, are we assuming the government's going to pony up another twenty-three thousand to fill in the hole? No, I don't think they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they canceled the last payment on that. The governor decided to reallocate the money. Oh, so we oh, nice, got, yeah. well, nice. But but again, just, we're not. Uh, have you all assumed that we're going to have another shutdown? Well, we, sh we cut the community center rental uh, about $5,000 because of that. So that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Is there anything else besides that that would where we could take a hit if they shut this thing down? Community you center got instructor fees, we're really bad on that right now, too. If you they haven't been back. The CPR is the only classes that are being taught um, to um, medical personnel to get CPR certified. Um, other than that, um, our loss and our loss is still the same. Um, we could see a little bit of a hit in the lost, the local option sales tax, but it would be delayed by three to six months because the money is distributed, is collected and then distributed 30 to 60 days after the reporting period. How about so your alcohol taxes? Those are, no, uh, those, no. no, because those are um, permits and fees. It's not so much a well, per drink tax, is it? The alcohol taxes, each alcohol company that sells in Sharpsburg has to um, send us a excise tax. And right now we've received $12,000 for alcohol. So actually our a alcohol may go up yeah, <laughs> if things shut up. down and people start it's drinking some more. It's going to my house. I don't know that. Uh -huh. <laughs> the only reason I bring, bring it up is that we ought to go into this with our eyes open that that uh, the revenues 219 could be a lot less, or could be measurably less. Mm -hmm. There's less going to it, you know, understanding that. <clears throat> yeah, and so I think that the biggest thing that hit us last year as far as, as revenue was the community center, losing, the, what, 20, 23, 23? Well, right now, we're right right looking at this, it is the community center rental. We budgeted 16, and we've only received 52, so we're out $10,700. 
Um, we can always adjust the budget accordingly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, we don't know what the future holds, Tom. So, right. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. So, just have to go with what is. Yeah. All right. I'll second. Well, we only did an increase of 4.5 across the board, um, you know, on, on some things, which is, which is pretty, pretty low. Mm -hmm. So we try not to go up, you know, we, we try to, you have to, you have to make sure your income accounts are going to match your expense accounts because we know we got to pay bills, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, uh, we, we, we thought about that and bounced it back and forth while, while we were working on these numbers about a potential shutdown. And I, I, I feel that we're fairly well prepared for it. Um, I think our experience last year is, is going to help us. And we knew not to put as much emphasis on the community center rentals as we did because we lost 10 grand this year. <laughs> and that's a lot. Yeah. You know, I think 2019 was a a massive year for us mm -hmm. when I took over that mm -hmm. and we kind of split our Saturdays and had two mm -hmm. rentals instead of one and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we were making some major bucks. I mean, we made probably $24,000 mm -hmm. that year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Have y'all looked at the expenditures and the things you could cut? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know what you're going to cut? Yep. Yeah. Going into, well, if we have to have if, another yeah. shutdown. Yeah, if, you know, if, if, if the revenues go to hell because of, because of the COVID thing, what are you going to cut? That's mm -hmm. my point. And well, it's obvious the transportation, the advertising, mm -hmm. the travel. The training, yeah. the training, training and travel. The roadside trimming. I mean, that's another thing to look mm -hmm. at. The lawn care. Somebody bring me a lawnmower and I'll cut hours for $500 a month. Actually, I'll beat their quote. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for four He'll do a better job. <laughs> and I'll do a better job. Rick came out here Saturday and blowed the thing off because it looked awful. But anyway, so. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of things that we could cut, yes. Um, you know, the things that we can't cut is, you know, our utilities. That's the biggest thing. Um, other than that, you got it. Okay, go. my second. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. So, next item is going to be the statewide mutual aid and assistance agreement. This is a intergovernmental agreement between GEMA, uh, Emergency Management Agency, and the town of Georgia. And this basically says that we will help our neighbors, and if we need help, we can ask help of our neighbors. Uh, Brad, I would assume that you have done this a time or two, so I will let you take a few minutes if you want to walk through it and, and just kind of give us a, a, a Brad's notes on what we're um, what we're agreeing to here. Well, I don't, you can pull your mask off while you're talking. If you want okay. to. As to whether or not the town had actually ever signed, you know, mutual aid agreements, say, with the sheriff's department, with the city of Newton, with Peachtree City of Sonoy, and, and the answer probably is no. Mm -hmm. All right. And the reason for that is that the town does not have those public safety or public works uh, departments where it can offer that. So, in other words, if a culvert collapsed, um, you know, across the road in an unincorporated area or the town of Turin, um, and you had a public works, they could call you, you could send your public works folks over there to uh, assist in the, in the pipe replacement. But since the town does not have that, then it, it can't offer that type of service. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> the Sheriff's Department, of course, responds to anything that's going on. Fire Department responds to anything that's going on here. All right, so those agreements are out there. Um, now, of course, fortunately, not the wood, the only time we had to kind of use one of them in the city of Newton was because of the rally that was held there. And, and that was kind of an interesting deal because everybody sent people and responded, but nobody sent us a bill, okay? And it was simply that they looked at it from being a training 
exercised and that the city would do the same thing for them if, if that did. So it's, this? it's kind yeah. of a part. When was that? That was two, two years ago. Two years yeah. ago. When that people was going to show up? That's when last the year, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, according to them, I'm a Nazi. So. <laughs> right. All right. When, when, when the Aryan Nation, whatever their name was, when they came and had a rap. Oh, okay. And we had all the Antifa folks that showed up mm -hmm. and all. And we went through a huge deal. We got this lady, Mary, I can't think of her name right now, with the Georgetown Law School that had been doing this. And they had studied what went on in Richmond and studied what went on in um, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, and a couple of others in Seattle, and we put together a plan to separate the folks. And so this plan is being used across the country that, that we kind of came up with, uh, in which we had help from GBI and State Patrol and all these other organizations to come up with the, the plan. Um, and we had, it, it was, the event went off, there were only about six arrests made. Most of those were for, you know, uh, paramilitary type activities that were occurring. Um, <coughs> all of those people ended up not coming. Of course, most of these people weren't from around here. No, they, you know, they were from other states and other places. All right, so that being said, that was kind of the thing that went on. Of course, this could be the same thing with the gas explosion. It could be the same thing, like I said, with you know, road flowing out, it could be situations where you had um, other type of uh, activities, emergency activities that occurred. You pick up the phone, you call, and they come. Well, what it does do is it provides for you to reimburse those agencies when they're providing that service. Mm -hmm. All right. So for here, this is a statewide that GEMA has put together for counties and towns and municipalities to sign off on a statewide agreement so that you would get GEMA people coming in, you would get those resources would be available under the agreement for them to come in and work with your local people, which at this point you don't have a public works and you don't have a fire and police. So anyway, so the, the odds of you obviously going out and assisting Sonoy doesn't exist. Um, if GEMA, if you didn't have an agreement and GEMA called you up and said, can you send some folks out to do this? So this is, they got together and said, we need to have a statewide plan. So the bottom line is if you, enter into the agreement with it, they will provide you the services if you ever need those services from the state. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything for them. But we don't have those resources. Yeah. 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 Well, but we you would pay them. Right. Right. That's, that's the whole, as was, I know Turin's gotten the same kind of spill, Harrelson, Borland, all of these, uh, smaller towns that went out to everybody. And so, but the idea is that if the state sent somebody in to assist with that type of an emergency, all right, then at that particular point in time, and I guess, I'm not sure, but let's say that a, a train car came off the railroad tracks and yeah. came plowing all the way up through City Hall. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. that, that's the kind of thing then you could call and get assistance from the state to come in and quickly put that together uh, without having to wait for the railroad to take some kind of action. Mm -hmm. All right, but the downside is if you do call them, there's a provision in here for you to reimburse them for, the uh, mm -hmm. for those costs for them to come in. Now, mm -hmm. of course, there are two pieces to it. Number one is you don't have to call it. Mm -hmm. You know, under the agreement, you don't have to call it. You designate someone, in this case, it's probably the mayor, uh, to call for that. So it's not like they're just going to show sure. up mm -hmm. if something goes up. So 
you know, if, if there's any downside for the town is that we're talking about budget, is that it could get into a budgeted situation if you were asked to reimburse them for those costs. Okay. But only if we call them to help us with something that's only if you call them. Yeah. What happens if they volunteer? Could, could they volunteer? If they don't get a call and they volunteer, then it's we don't pay. But I, I think what Cynthia's asking though is if we call them and they showed up, could they use it as a training exercise and not send us a bill for sure. reimbursement? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of like how Nuna did, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I mean, because, the because they know it's a yeah, small town, what, we won't I have mean, it in our budget anyway. The last conversation I had with Mark Cooper, nobody had sent a bill. And that's been, I had to. I did a presentation at GMA not this past year because we didn't have GMA, but the year before on everything that went on during that money and as of that day, which was, you know, whatever it was, 14 months later, nobody would send a bill. So. If we don't have any money, I can assume anything. I got about five more minutes. Are we on the hook for some the clock, he said. No. I got two. The thing of it is, odds on, we probably won't never need it. Yes, thank but you. But I'd like to have it if we did. Yes, yeah. This I mean, it, that's all. And you can terminate it anytime you want to. What about a tornado? Mm. Yes, this would be it a It would cover situation. a tornado. If you, mm -hmm. if you wanted to call in for assistance from the state. Mm -hmm. Is it yep. just the state? I think it's something we need on the book. Or, or a toxic tornado. Just in case. Oh, okay. yeah, I see. Just, just like you should. Yep. Exactly. Well, I, it just covers. Do it like insurance. Mm -hmm. We don't have to call them. Ain't no big deal. Yeah. Need them, it's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And look, we're already reimbursing folks for helping us out. We pay stuff to the county, not all the time, but there have been a few time, times when we've done public works and they'll send us a bill and we'll make the payment out of usually SPLOS is where it comes yeah. from because it's infrastructure, infrastructure stuff. Also, too, this morning when, before I came in, I went down William Circle Sunset. They've been doing a lot of work, work on Sunset, but the end of Sunset and 54 where the Dollar General is, I fell off into a huge hole. Oh, well, that's no. the one I was talking about. Yeah. Yes. Hmm? By the yeah, Dollar the General Sunset. Not Mac, or not um, Williams, it's Sunset. Oh, oh. Yes. Well, is that so the same? That's the same. No, just, that's where's, another one. Where's one way? That's another one. Okay. Well, okay. I'll, can you remind me to look at yeah. that? I, I didn't know there was one at Sunset. Yeah. Because we just got another bill from them for the uh, rock, I guess, that they were putting for, in Sunset. For the driveway. Yeah. Cool. Good. Okay. Yeah, who's on the driveway? Huh? Who's on the driveway? Um, I, you know, that's the thing. I don't think it's there's any downside. You know, but it's just like anything else. Uh, you know, you, you, um, Call them when you need them. Yeah. It's just that like insurance. If you don't so, need it, don't. I mean, don't yeah. call it in. Dear, get your pictures. So don't call them in. Do we have to have a second reading on this? We just vote no. on. No, this is this is straight up vote. Um, I'll so, make a motion we accept it as it is. In because like I said, I, I think it's better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. Okay. Well, there's no downside. Yeah. For us. Yep. Listen, I don't see anything wrong with it. All second. Okay. All right. So Stan has the first. Elizabeth has the second. Um, all in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Uh, that concludes new business. Do you guys need to go I, and cut out? We need to sorry. sign on that. Do they do, uh, do they need to sign anything? Um, yes, I do have. If you can wait just one second and and approve the second reading for the caterer's license, I will need everybody's signature on two forms, and then you're out of here. Okay. Okay. Caterer's license, second reading, to basically let the, the the food truck sell alcohol. It's Make just a motion. Oh, second line. Right. Okay. Elizabeth has a first. <laughs> Tom has a second. <laughs> oh, he said he's all, he said. <laughs> all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, you want to just come out yeah, I, need to get yeah. I apologize for being late and leaving. No. Right. no, 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 no. Hey, look, we got it in. I appreciate y'all staying. Thank you for that. Do y'all have anything for polling of council, either of you? Nope. Oh. No. Okay. Not me. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Bye. Appreciate you sticking with us. So we're finishing old business. So yeah. we have no polling? Uh, well, those two don't. I'm okay. going to go down the list in a second. That you were asking. We'll go down the table. Thank you, Cynthia.
Tom. Okay, so polling the council. Tom, you have anything? I've been admonished not to have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. It ain't easy. <laughs> It ain't easy being green. <laughs> hey, did, I have one thing I want to ask about, and it's sure. a yes or no question. Okay. Have heard anything back from engineers about the capacity of our sewage system? No, that should come in the next two, next week or two. Okay. Oh, and Chris has had, I, I think he has had the baby. Oh, wow. They were on Baby Watch uh, Thursday when I called to get an update. He said he doesn't, he, 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 he's waiting on a baby. He doesn't have an update, but he will have something both on the septic survey and the back parking lot for January. Okay. Number two. Yep. Um, you know, with all this activity that y'all have got coming in here with all these festivals and whatnot, mm -hmm. we ought to go ahead and fix that, because that fence back there. That looks like, well, it looks like hell. It, it looks <laughs> worse well, now. Now it, hell. it works worse because Saturday when we, hit, when we were here decorating, their pine straw fell over it and the rest of it broke down. So, and I sent a picture over to Arbor Valley to see what they're going to do, because they were just dummying it and make it stand up, oh, yeah. you know? So do you think, well, I wonder, so I have seen at construction sites where they take these fences and just put them on posts and it's just like a temporary fence. With it falling, we may need to do that. That's, yeah. Tom, that's actually a really good point and I hadn't, I just hadn't thought about it. It just, it just looks like the devil and I hate for all these wonderful folks to show up for our market and say, huh, that's like shit. Well, if we can get some of that black felt even and put up. Yeah, okay. You know, something. 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 Yeah, we're going to need to have We, we can call and get some quotes from somebody and see what they'll charge us to put up something to block that off. Okay. But we right. can't close it because Arbor Valley's been parking back here mm -hmm. because they are out of parking. Spaces. Are we uh, charging them for that parking? <laughs> you should. No. Well, well, so we kind of horse trade a little bit with them. Instead of paying them for our overflow parking, we're letting them park in our lot during the week and getting yeah. the overflow parking for free. Okay, so we're getting the overflow for nothing. Yes, now we are. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not paying them anymore, that's yeah. for sure. All right. And we'll look at that. Remember to look at That's all I have. All right. Um, clerk's minutes? All right. Um, we do need to reschedule our January the 4th um council meeting we have to amend our 2020 budget and we have to approve our second reading for the 2021 budget and by the fourth i won't have um my bank statements and all of that stuff in probably um probably by the fourth but not on the fourth so um i just don't know because i will need um i will need some downtime to do a lot of budgeting Also, uh, we, we already discussed this, but we were going to discuss the, the budget. But other than that, that's it for me. So are you all okay with moving it to January the 11th, yeah. the second Monday? The, my, I don't have a concern for January's council meeting, but if we do the comp planning meetings on Monday, that's going to limit our flexibility for rescheduling. So as much as I'd like to keep it on a Monday, it may not fit our schedule. They said Tuesdays, too. Yeah. Tuesdays. Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Tuesdays, Wednesdays. So, so that's one thing I want to look at too when we look at the comp planning. Okay. Um, I don't have any huge, huge updates. Um, parking lot and uh, septic survey will be next month. Uh, banners are up. We will put up. I'm gonna try to get. We've got some Christmas lights. I'm gonna try to put those up on the poles that have the banners. Maybe Sunday I do the outlets. You find some lights. Yes, yes, Dina was able to. I yes. Saturday okay. morning, I was at the Home Depot. I've got none, but I, there's the, the three corners out Tarantine and Maine. I didn't buy for those. I thought they were had the banners, but they didn't. That's that's fine. So we can we can go get the other three if we need to. I just want to get it up and make sure yeah. that that they're working. The the team hungry people tried it, but because it was in the daylight, it wouldn't come on because of the sensor in there. So they didn't think it was working. So they didn't do it's any not. of them. So I'm assuming that once it gets dark and I plug it in, it's going to work, but what? You need to move the trash we, or the trees that we cut out to make room for those banners. Take them out of Joe's front yard. Are they still in? Yeah, oh, did we, we not just, pick them up? No, we just threw them over the side of the road. I thought maybe Harper's, or Harper's down. 
Harper Valley is going to pick them up. <laughs> Harper Valley PTA is going to pick them up. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about that. Okay, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, I need to go over there and get those. We, we cut a bunch of them off the trees to get those back. Well, good, because you, when I came Saturday, I really couldn't hardly count none. I couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. well, because they're in the damn trees. There were four on Maine and five mm -hmm. on Tarantine, but the, the, the trees are hiding them. Mm -hmm. The other piece of news that I have for you guys is I have found a grant program through USDA that will repair single-family residential properties that are that are home 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 owner occupied, and it's a if you're over if you're over 62 it's a grant if you're under 62 it's a one percent loan for home repairs typically about up to twenty thousand dollars they'll repair roofs they'll repaint. They'll weatherize, they'll improve the windows. So all these dilapidated properties around town. But a lot of them are. If it's owner occupied. Owner -occupied. If it's owner occupied. But that's going to take care of some Those of Those two on the end. Yes. So so what I want to if do. They, if they agree to do the grant. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what I want to do is in, in the town staff will shepherd sheep heard the process mm -hmm. and reach out to the homeowner assist with filling out the forms and just walk them through the process Perfect. what's the what's the gotcha in it, in it is there no. a gotcha? well the only gotcha is um you need to pay money back it's, that's really about the only mm -hmm. only gotcha is it has it's to be a grant so it's not there's no payback 62 and up is a grant 62 and under is a one percent loan and I need to talk with them because I'd like the town to take a more proactive approach um, in case it doesn't work. I was thinking that we could possibly do some match, but this doesn't require any match. I mean, if you're eligible, they'll come in and do the repairs. Nice. So, well, I, shouldn't code enforcement be involved first? <laughs> to no, 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 because, no, because this is, well, I mean, yes, they could, and, and that'll, be, that'll be the stick. You know, the care is, hey, we have this program, all you got to do is apply for it, we'll help you with it. The stick is, here's the deficiencies that you got to correct. And so we're going to be working out that program, and hopefully we'll start it in. Shoot, I wonder if I can get it. 2021. So what about any rental programs? No. Nothing. Got to be owner-occupied. We need to apply. Yeah, we got to. Damn, dump you with it. I know. Really needs to be painted. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you could. This, I mean, this this is a program that's available to everybody. And 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 she just told me that they got some some money recently, so they're looking for. Oh, so they're ready to spend. Yeah, they're ready to spend. Perfect. Yeah, and it takes about three months to do it. Three months to do the program. That's awesome. That is interesting. She just had to spend ten grand on her roof. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Did you ask a question about Patsy? No, have y'all, Miss Patsy that lives next to Haynes Trail in Tarantino, have y'all heard anything about her? The, the, no. The, lady that, the little lady that lives right next to Kathleen. Um, I remember oh. Kathleen Rose called one day whenever we had that tree down in the county. Um, mm -hmm. She, at the little lady, actually wouldn't let people come down there until the fire department went down and removed the tree. So that's been recently then? That's been... That's been the last six months. Six months ago, yeah. Wow, y'all haven't seen that her. I haven't seen her. Because I haven't seen her. I've seen Kathleen. Oh, no, I've seen Kathleen. Okay. But not, the, not Patsy next door. I have corner. That happens. Okay. She, that's an under-occupied place. It'd be nice for, mm -hmm. for her to have the access to the cash to fix that mm -hmm. place. Yep. Yes, and we have several on the end of Terrence mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. that's going to be our next. Those are going to be the ones that... I really want to, Patty, Miss Pat, uh, Miss Beckham, Patty Lynn Beckham will be the one yes. that we go to first. And then you got that one, you got that for next to the Richards too, on the main. That woman from Colorado that came back. Regina? Regina? Mm -hmm. Yes, Regina. Yep. That's on the occupied as well. On the occupied? And, uh, and Polly also. Mm hmm. So you got a lot of targets. Mm hmm. And that would be a, that'd be a, we're just going to wear them all. Blue, what's yeah. the name of the brand? The USDA Section 504 Housing Repair oh. Loan and Rent Program. <laughs> section Section 504. Gosh, I need to have a I'm 68. I can get it. And those are my those are my updates. Um, Dean, is there anything else that 
that I need to mention? Anything else we've had going on? I don't think so. I just need your signatures before you leave. Um, and I guess we just need to adjourn and that's it. Okay. All right. If there's no other business before council, I'll ask for an adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Elizabeth first. Tom second. All in favor. Go forth to prosper.